Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic. We're going to do this investment simple interest problem using one variable. A total of $8,000 is deposited in two simple interest accounts. The annual interest rate is 12% in one account and 10% in the other account. The total annual interest earned was 900. How much was invested in each account? Okay, first of all, before even attempting this, we have to make sure that we know the, f the formula for finding out the interest, simple interest, on an investment. So, if this is how I define P, R, T, and I, P is the principal, how much money you put in your account, R is the interest rate, usually given as a percent, and we write it as a decimal in the problem. You could write it as a fraction as well, but usually we write it as a decimal. T is the time in years, and I is the interest earned. I equals PRT is the simple interest formula. If we're only talking about one year, as in this problem, then you would be putting in one for T, and that would just give you the formula I equals PR times one, or I equals PR. And I like to switch that around. Instead of writing P times R, I like to think of it as R times P. Doesn't really matter, though. So here's a quick example. If you're trying to find the interest earned, if you invested $5,000 for one year at 6%, I, the interest earned, is the rate, okay, 6% written as a decimal is 0 .06, times the principal. $5,000 is how much you invest and that will be $3,000. So here we are back to this problem. We're trying to figure out how much we put in each account, right? We know we invested a total of $8,000 in two separate accounts. One pays 12% interest, one pays 10% interest. We also know at the end of the year the total interest earned was $900. So we have to keep that separate here. How much money you put in the account is very different than how much interest you earn, of course. All right, so in shorthand here, my total investment was $8,000, correct? I've got two different accounts, and I know my total interest. Somehow I have to figure out how much was put in each account, like was it 6000 in one of the accounts and 2000 in the other, etc. I like to make a little chart to keep some information. So what I'm going to do is make a little chart. And I know there's the, the two different kinds of accounts I have. I'm going to put ACCT for account. I've got a 10% account, and I have a 12% account, right? You could write that out more in words, but this just helps me remember the kinds of account. You can call this account A and account B if you'd like. And I like to write down the rate as a decimal. So for each account, I'm going to write the rate as a decimal. All right, so how do I write 10% as a decimal? I could write 0.1 or 0.10. I'm going to go ahead and write it as 0 0.10. And how do I write 12% as a decimal? That would be 0.12. Okay, if you forget how to change a percent to a decimal, you might want to look at the videos on that. Now, how about the principal? This is the tricky part. Because we know that I is going to be, right, the interest is going to be the rate times the principal. So the question is, what am I going to put in for the principal? I've only got $8,000. I don't want to say only. I have a total of $8,000. And I don't know what these are. This is where the variable comes in. So let's say I put X in this account. Okay, then how much is left? to put in this other account. All right, so that's the question. How much is, am I going to put? Well, I know that X plus however much I put in that other account, that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Has to be $8,000. Does that make sense? These two numbers have to add up to $8,000. So uh, what would this box equal? I could just subtract X from both sides. So the amount of money left here will be 8000 minus X. So in other words, if I put 2,000 in the first account, I would have 6,000 left to put in the other account. 
Anytime you have two numbers add up to one of the numbers, it's x and the number minus x. And then you could check it. Is it really true that these add up to 8,000? That's simple. 8x plus 8,000 minus x, right? That's how much is in each account. What does that add up to? Well, the x's cancel, right? Because they're like terms and et cetera. We get 8,000. So hopefully it makes sense to you. If you put x in one account, the other one is 8,000 minus x. Now, it might have been easier to put x for the point 12 and 8,000 minus x for the point 10. In fact, it probably would be, but that's up to you. You get to define where you want to put the x and where you want to put the 8,000 minus x. Now, we know that the rate times the principal has to equal the interest earned in each account, right? So in this 10% account, I just multiply my rate times my principal. That's point 10 x. That's how much interest I earn in this 10% account, right? How much interest will I earn at the 12% account? It'll be 12, it'll be its rate times its principal. So the rate is 0.12 and what's the principal here? It's 8,000 minus x. So here's the interest from one account, here's the interest from the other account. And what do I know about the total interest? The total interest is $900. What does that mean? That means if I take the interest I earn on the first account and I add it to the interest in the other account, it should add up to $900. And that's how we get our equation. You have to be careful. What did it tell us about the interest? Sometimes it'll say, oh, the interest is the same. Well, then we'd make it the same. It just depends what they tell you. This time it was a total interest from these accounts was 900. So in other words, in words, I could say the interest earned in the 10% count, right? However much interest I earned there, plus the interest earned at the 12% account, that should add up to $900. That's what I'm saying here. Are we okay with that? Well, what is that exactly? What, what was that interest earned at 10%? So let's fill out what that really is. That was the 0.10x. So let's write that. 0.10x. That was the interest earned at the 10% account. How much was earned at the, in the 12% account? It was 0.12 times you see, I'm going to have to leave myself some room. 8,000 minus x. Okay, so here we have the amount earned in one account, right? Here's the interest from one account plus the interest from the other account is a total of $900. That is our equation, okay? The interest earned at one account plus the interest earned in the other account equals the total interest earned. So this is the equation we need to solve. All right, now you can solve this using uh, leaving everything with decimals. I learned algebra before we had calculators and I always tried to make my arithmetic easier. So one way of doing it is to get rid of the decimals by multiplying both sides of the equation by either 10 or 100 or 1,000, so you get to move your decimal over. And so I'm going to use that method. You certainly do not have to do this. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100 to move my decimal two places to the right. So if I do 100 times 0.10x, that is 10x, right? If I do 100 times 0.12 times that, you only multiply it by the 0.12. Oops, which means I'm going to have 12. You can't also multiply the stuff in the parentheses because that means you've just multiplied it by 10,000, 100 times another 100. But don't forget you have to multiply the right-hand side by 900 as well. This is my shorthand uh, method of just putting a big parentheses on both sides of the equation. But if you'd like, you can write 100 times the left side, 100 times the right side. 
but don't forget to multiply the right hand side by 100 that gives you 90,000 so this is just a way to make my uh, arithmetic easier um, while I'm solving the equation you could leave everything in decimals and you're going to be fine just be careful of decimal points All right so now I don't have any decimals so it's a little bit easier to solve so I have 10x plus here we have the distributive property so I have to do 12 times 8,000 so remember how to do that you do 12 times 8 which is 96 and then we append these three zeros right so it's 96,000 and don't forget to distribute the 12 to the x as well so I'm going to have minus 12x equals 90,000. All right, so let's combine like terms here. I have negative 2x plus 96,000 equals 90,000. So we could subtract 96,000 from both sides. We're just combining like terms. Well, no, we're not. We're about to combine like terms. We're isolating the variable on the left side. So negative 2x equals. All right, now how do you do 90,000 minus 96,000? Well, there's more negative, so the answer is going to be negative, and then you subtract 96,000 minus 90,000 is negative 6,000 divide both sides by negative 2. Be careful here. Don't just divide by 2. First of all, it wouldn't make any sense. You can't have a, you can't put a negative amount of dollars in an account. So, what do we end up with? X is 3,000. Now remember, X stood for something. Okay, let's go back up here. What did X stand for? X stood for the amount of money I'm investing at 10%. All right, so it looks like I'm going to invest 3,000 at 10 percent which leaves what for the amount invested at 12 percent? 5,000. So let's go back to the original problem. We just came up with X was the amount invested at the 10 percent and we got that it was 3,000, right? So it looks like it's going to be $3,000 invested at the 10 percent which left 5,000 in the other investment, right? So we're hoping this is the correct answer. Alright, I'm going to put a box around it but it might not work in which case, you know, go back to square one. So let's just do a little check. Okay, what's 10 percent of 3,000? Because that's how much interest I would earn in the 10 percent account. So 10 percent of that would be three hundred dollars. You would do 0 0.1 or one tenth times three thousand. Okay, so that's how much money you would earn in interest in that 10 percent account. And what is 12 percent of that five thousand? So you'd have to do 12 percent of five thousand and that ends up being six hundred dollars and that gives us a total of nine hundred dollars in interest and so yes if you look back at the problem that's true now remember ten percent of three thousand remember you could just write point ten times three thousand right I, I'm not showing that step but that's point twelve times five thousand as well so this is indeed the correct answer three thousand dollars invested at ten percent and five thousand dollars invested at twelve percent All right, I also do this problem using two variables. For those of you who know how to solve equations with two variables and two equations, a system of equations, it could be done that way. Also, this problem could, be done, could have been done by letting x be at 12 percent and 8,000 minus x at 10 percent. Your answer for x will be a different answer because x is going to stand for what is at 12 percent 
So you'll, you'll get a different answer for X. You'll get $5,000 and you'll get 3000 for the 10%. So your answer is the same, but your equation will look different as you solve it. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.